break. We've got the castings all cleaned up, and as you saw, Deb helped us use the 3F transfer punch just to mark those holes. I'm going to drill the holes from the back and then turn to and counter sink them. These probably big wood screws will go in here, so things aren't critical. I'm just going to get them as, as close as I can get. This is the only flat face I've got to work off, so we'll put a parallel on there and just sort of. That feels good. It's a case of splitting the difference to get it. That's good. I need to put a wiggle out of there, line each one up, drill them out the three eighths, turn it over, and then don't to sink them. They certainly look good. It's a three -eighth, three eighth drill and a three eighth punch, so that's pretty good. I'll do the other one and then we'll concentrate on the other side. I've got a counter sink here which certainly appears to be the right angle. So now it's a simple case of counter sink in these four holes. I'm setting it up on two parallels because the bottom face is the only face that's actually anywhere near flat. them in because it's not drilling all the way through and that'll stop any chance of it from moving. It's down hard on the parallels there. Right that's nice there so I can lock the table off at that and then count a single hole. the pressure on and keep this cutting. Once it stops cutting it polishes and then it won't start again. You've really got to put some weight on it. Right, we've managed to get the holes drilled. Um, the next thing is to bore this out. It's also got a keyway in there. Now I have got a, a brooch, 516 brooch, so I can cut the keyway. I'll have to make a guide for it, a uh, brush and guide, I've never, you know I've got one the right size. So what I'll do, I'll also, I'll make a brush and guide now, but I'll drill the centre right through, so I can put a transfer punch through there, to mark the centre in there. Once again, it's going to be a, a line up as best possible. I don't think the tolerances are that great on these parts. It's well over 100 year old. So we'll just make it as a go along, I suppose. And you're there both. Worth drilling counter sunk. I think I'll probably end up boring these in the mill. I'll mount on a face plate like that and 
go down and bore it that way. That's the sort of thing we need to make. It's a guide for the brooch that would go in there. And the brooch goes in there and that keeps it nice and square. So it cuts a nice clean tear way. Doesn't matter how many these you've got, you've now got one the right size. But I'm also going to drill down the centre and I can use it to pick up the centre in the castings. And I've got a suitable piece of material here to make it out of. More than enough. Square the end up and some other at first. Send that in to give a little bit more support. There's a lot to come off this, so we'll put a power feed on the wood.
Right, what I've been only that face it's fairly flat on this. I'm gonna use the you got a bell end's head you I need to mark the centre of that hole. So what I can do is use the bush that we made for the the brooch held against it. It's all a compromise, I say. Sort of evening out the best. And you know, we'll use that just to just to mark it. Right, and quite honestly, I couldn't have guessed any better than that. We'll do the other one when it's set up. Right, once again. I'm basically laying the two rows of holes up. It's this thing here, it's actually very slightly shorter because that was used as a pattern and it shrunk. But I'm sure it'll be perfectly acceptable for what it's got to do. Right, and that one's suitably marked as well. If you needed this angle plate, if it's shown 90 degrees to the bed of the machine, you'd obviously use a clock gauge and clock it in. But for what I'm going to be done with it, just merely set it up with a, a square, it's more than adequate. I'm going to bolt this under there, pick that centre up, drill it, bolt it to size. I wanted to find two countersunk bolts, I've got it held nice and firmly onto the Angle plate, all you need to do now is make sure that that's sitting level, as least as level as I can, can get it. I'm just going to use a parallel to act as a gear. And that's actually, that's pretty good at that. You can see it's a compromise because nothing's really square on the job. If the whole casting was machined, it would defeat the object and make it look like, a, like an old casting. That's why they got me to cast it and not get somebody to make it out of the solid. Right, that's pretty good. Settle for that. We'll have a look at it. It even looks good. Absolutely spot on, so I can lock the table up at that. on the end of part two uh, featuring my wife Debsy. Um, I didn't, I wasn't going to put it on but she said it would be alright to put it on. Uh, it wasn't really funny, well, it's funny looking back uh, but I can assure you that Debs is alright and we're, all, we're still speaking. Anyway, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing and as always a massive thanks for all the nice well wishes and comments that are coming in. Thanks for watching. We've got a nice mark right in the middle, or what appears to be the middle. Bollocks, man! The drops used to do, John, lad. I might as well just keep that spar on the floor, it spends that much time there.
paint on it. I don't know what to do. I'm going to hold this in line, and all I'll do is it goes a transfer punch, got right. a little dot on. It goes in there and just give a gentle twirl on it. So I'll get it, I'll get it in the line. Let's have a look. Oh, the devil, let's have a little look. <laughs> 